word, a general in God's army, many years of fruitful experience, a great man of God, great teacher of the word of God. It is my privilege to welcome for the second night, Senior Bishop. This is Harvest Chapel International. But oh, what was that? If you are shouting, shout. Yeah. Yesterday, I was prophetically focusing on this HIM. And what came to me is that in Him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. So in Harvest Chapel we live. Oh, you didn't get it. In Harvest Chapel we move. In Harvest Chapel we have our being. If you believe prophetically, shout unto the Lord. Hey! Say hey! Hallelujah! I want to thank Reverend Odonko so much. The very dear wife, the first lady of this hymn. I was just sitting down then. I remember that sometimes Christmas, I have to take a decision not to expect anything from anybody. Because psychologically, birthdays and christmas if your expectation is that people will bring you something you set yourself up for disappointment no psychologically but one day we'll talk about that one today we'll come and talk about that one yes there's a result to that effect but anytime people have disappointed me i will always receive a hamper from him <laughs> clap your hands a hamper glorious hamper and anytime i see the hamper i look at the items and what comes to me readily is a gun where i'm here it really seek for interpretation not every hamper is hamper but some hamper when you look at the items so that come on if you have power come on you can buy really put your hands together for Harvest International. Now I'm serious. And every Easter when I am quiet and hot, at the same time preaching everywhere, I'll always receive complimentary tickets to join your musical programs. And let me tell you, I stand here today to say thank you. And it's been consistent. Oh, there are some people, they forget you when they don't see you. Is there any Lebanese here? If you are out of your police uniform or your customs uniform, when they see you, hey, Mr. Mord, how are you? They won't even tell you anything. They will just run away. People will abandon you when the cloak of authority is no more on you. But David said, when I am weak, then I will run to the Lord. Because old age brings so many challenges. Are you listening to me? But David knows the wickedness of man and the forgetfulness of the mind of man. And so he said, when I am old, I pray one prayer, oh God, that you will give me the power that another version said, to be relevant to this generation and yet to be relevant to the generation yet unborn. Lord, he said, that I may show your power, which means I may show your relevance and my relevance. I pray that when you are 90, you shall still be relevant. <laughs> Oh, come on. Are you going somewhere there? Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. I want to thank Pastor Donko, his wife, and my own friend, Pastor Titilati. Cool but powerful. And I, I love people like that. 
The devil can never predict him. You don't know whether the guy is going to cast or rebuke or tear down or uproot. But when he grabs the microphone, you know where he goes to. Put your hands together for Reverend Titilati. And all that person. Move. Are you still alive? Move. Move. Are you still alive? Good. God bless you and all pastors. Pastor, let me tell you, loyalty pays. Loyalty pays. There's no need to rush anywhere, especially when I look at your gray hairs. Uh, it will be very suicidal to try to do something else. Am I okay to talk? This is the time for you to build this church. Now what pertains to life and godliness shall come to you. It's not the age to go and do a carpenter's box and create a pulpit and begin to shout and call people to join you. Poaching from aquarium. And transferring and swapping from aquarium to aquarium bringing curses that your father couldn't pronounce on you upon you stay alive by supporting this church to grow and when the leader is lifted up remember the tools shall also go with him give the lord a hand in the name of jesus the oil flows from the head through the beard to the skirts of his garment and you are the elders you are the beard the maturity of this church is dependent on your maturity because you depict maturity the beard pastor donko is the head uh, you and i are the beard are you listening and then out of the beard flow down and everybody including the last boy in the house to receive some oil today may you receive oil yeah. the nigerians are all protocol observed amen tonight we want to teach i'm not going to teach a little bit oh i'm not going to teach for a long time and uh, let me say what i wanted to add to yesterday and then we're going to prayer are you ready to pray yes. prayer is a very interesting thing prayer the bible said that we should pray always and not stop praying the day you stop praying you will die because the day you stop eating you will die the same way when you stop praying you shall also what die but today we shall die we will live for the works of the lord now quickly quickly very quickly I, I didn't mean to preach at all but psalm 55 let's look at verse 16 to 22 i give you about seven points david described how he overcame rejection betrayal and abundance sorry abandonment in other words offense David describes how he overcame rejection, betrayal, and abandonment. Let's look at that. The reason why yesterday God wanted us to do what we did was because plus today is a package for testimonies. Because when you are ready spiritual and you add prayer to it, you can give a specific testimony. And other great men of God will bring different dimensions and other dimensions to crown the whole thing. But my assignment is this. And so flow with me is that right now david said number one he said in verse 16 he said for as for me i will call upon god and the lord shall save me when you are betrayed when you, you are rejected and abandoned don't carry offense in your heart david said the first thing i have to do is to call upon god for help expectantly that's what david said i will call upon god and the lord shall save me the Lord shall do what? You see, in situations like that, nobody saves except the Lord. You see, because the person who was offending you was offending you until you are offended. Hmm? So there is, no, there is no sweetness in it. And the person has the mind to kill you. Do you know that there are people who want to kill you? They will kill you emotionally, they will kill you psychologically, they will kill you everything and kill you bodily kill your spirit if you are not careful but they will do things to inhibit you from growing in the spirit but david said as for me i will call upon god lift up your hand and say i will call upon the lord tonight we shall call upon the lord isn't it and the lord shall do what save me the lord will save us from hell he will save us from poverty he will save us from abandonment he will save us from the clutches of the enemy he will save us from the wickedness of the enemy. I pray somebody lift up your voice and say, The Lord will save me. Say, The Lord will save me. 
quickly verse number two is look at verse 17 they said tell god your problem honestly tell god my problem honestly he said evening and morning and at noon i will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice which means i tell him let him hear your voice that is how you can overcome betrayal ladies and gentlemen the most painful thing 15 the most painful thing in this life is the person that you've been a blessing to pastors are always wounded because you take people who were nothing like somebody who put it don't say i said that it's an english phrase and i'm using it mm -hmm. those who were nothing had nothing you brought them into your home taught them how to pray taught them how to polish their shoes taught them how to wear fine shirts taught them how to spell good taught them how to preach taught them collected the woman from it the father's house gave it to them organized their weddings for them paid about 98.9 percent of the cost and they delivered you went to the hospital you prayed prayers and the child came without pain the adoring you organized and bankrolled the cost you set them up for grade schools. They are the same people who betray you. They will shift camp, NDC, MPP. And all that you said at M NDC, they go and give to the MPP people and then they will all start castigating, lambasting, defaming, killing you. Figuratively, MPP, NDC. Mm? Figuratively, not them. Hmm? But the question is that David said, when this happens to you, what do you do? Let it be an enemy by my own son. My own son. My own son. What a pity. <laughs> no more what a pity. My own son. Your own son. Not any other person. Not your political opponent. Not a witch or a wizard. Your own son. Can you imagine? Do you have a son? Turn towards your son and say, are you there, son? You think it's a joke, eh? Ah. Your son, hmm, was that baby you nurtured, took him to the university, became a lawyer, and now goes about telling people, my father is a bad lawyer, he doesn't know anything, I am the new kid on the block, I am the best lawyer, I went to Harvard, and so me, instead of 10 years on one case, I'll use two months to do it. So don't go to my father's chambers, not come to the high-tech chambers. Eh? And the father will tell you that don't think you are smarter than him. The university you went, he got it from that one case. He intentionally delayed. <laughs> are you listening to me? I say, hey. Say, hey. Some papa saying you wish you are man, man, you're rough. Case now, I've been there, you mean I was in every two months. I saw for on a mother show one case for 20 years, collecting money from the same client. And this boy grows up to betray you. David said, When it happens that way, oh Lord, are you listening to me? It's a tell God your problem honestly. Tell God what he has done to me is hurting me. David said, oh Lord, I have but one soul and when that soul is tired, I am hurt and I feel it. Though I am a king, but thou art my portion, oh God. I love David. David, anything you do to him, he will say anything. He will commit you to God quietly. Hmm. <laughs> say, I shall commit them to God. That is why there's no need to fight any human being. We are too weak to be fought. But the Bible would have said, let's fight human beings. But he said, for we wrestle not against human beings. But against some things. Are you listening to me? He said, he had delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. A battle that was what? Now, it was a fearful one. Oh. Fearful one. Fierce. Battle oh not kamaminka battle soldiers against soldiers bombs your own son flying bombs like syria aleppo 
boom, your own house, your own son. The Lord is our shepherd. The Bible said that forget not the stone in which you were hewn out from. Even dogs don't bite the finger that feeds it. Dog. A dog will not do it. So David said, number one, tell God your problem. Number two, verse 18, lean not on your own ability. He said, God, that's, give me verse 18 again. Sorry. Verse 18. He had delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. He has. So lean not on your own ability. Ahitophel said, I will kill him myself. Don't do it. It will kill you. Are you tired already? For there were many with me. Number four. Trust God's sovereignty. Trust God's sovereignty. That is verse 19. Verse 19. Trust God's sovereignty. Verse 19, sir. God shall hear. Now listen. Tonight, that is why we have the spiritual backing and the legal right to deal with the enemy because we don't carry any offense in our hearts so god shall hear come on and afflict them come on even he that abideth of old Salah means meditate <laughs> because they have no changes therefore they fear not god lean not on your own ability number four that's trust in the sovereignty of the lord number five learn your lessons from past miseries learn your lessons from past miseries quickly that's verse 20 he had put forth his hand against such as we at peace with him he had broken his covenant learn your lessons from past miseries say i went through it god took me out and he would take me again out again say amen, amen. quickly give your worries to god undoubtedly verse 22 the words of his mouth was verse 22 cast thy burden upon the lord and he shall sustain thee he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved give the lord a shout oh righteous give the lord a shout right now give the lord a shout right now then number seven verse 23 two is a trust his divine justice confidently Majibu Magbebo will not solve the problem the Bible says that trust his divine justice confidently cast is that verse 22 verse 23 23 it said but thou O God now hear this shall bring them down into the pit of what destruction bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days but i will trust in thee i read it again trust divine justice confidently so when you are a blow thrower you are not a christian christians don't fight because of who so are you hearing me no i have christians who will go and stand there waiting for the pastor to come to throw blows it has happened many times amsterdam i saw it with myself excuse me to say excuse me to say that is the truth so don't think i came to laugh at somebody without a good leg that's the truth it's not a story it's the truth unfortunately the pastor had had i think suffered poliomyelitis is that what you guys poliomyelitis so one leg was very small and apparently they had given the pastor money to buy a car it was a opal vector those days and i was preaching somewhere there so happened to be there and the pastor also thought that okay this was a gift and if it's a gift, you have divested yourself from ownership. So it's my property, isn't it? And so he took the decision to sell the Vectra to buy a smaller car and brought part of the money to complete his house in Ghana. That Sunday, <laughs> he 
instead of fighting satan and wicked things the group were here the pastor was here and the painful thing is out they held the good leg of the pastor and once you held his good leg the other one the pastor on the floor and women in cloth laces and lipsticks beating the pastor on the floor because he has betrayed them can you imagine you look at this church how would the church last both the people and the church are no more alive are you hearing me but i declare tonight that we shall not be people of offense but we will direct prayer where prayer must go lift up your voice and give god praise in the house are you ready to pray with me tonight i am here with reverend nat he's part of you you don't know him later you come and help me sing as we bind the devil amen tonight i want us to deal with some few issues and how many of you believe that it's good to pray because i have come with an agenda i was bringing some notebooks to teach and god said no do yours two days and leave the scene tonight by the time you live here it will not be based on someone else's testimony it shall be your personal testimony if you believe shout until they hear your voice oh jesus the lord is on our side tonight we are going to pray prayers the Bible says in first Timothy, first of all, pray. First Timothy chapter one, one to three. First of all, prayer and supplication be made for all men. We are going to pray different kinds of prayers. Tonight, you will pray different kinds of prayer. And anybody that the topic, in other words, you identify with the topic that will come, you can come forward and we pray together. Are you listening to me? Because as you come, this is what the Americans call the sanctuary this side of the church the americans call the sanctuary so that is where the power is like somebody will put it the concentration of the power is here and so if you hear a topic and you can identify with the topic don't go too close to pastor just come around the sanctuary then we can be praying together i lift it i listen to me and so we are praying with all kinds of prayers supplications petitions pleading and asking and holding on to the mercy seat of the almighty god are you hearing me we are praying going to pray until something happens in the house tonight we pray until there is a manifestation of god's glory in our lives sometimes the bible says let's let's look at Isaiah 64 1 to 7 i will show you some today i'm not preaching so i'll not be that coherent okay he said oh thou wouldst rend the heavens and thou would come down that the mountains might flow down at thy presence jump to verse 7 let me see something listen to me there's a serious statement here verse 7 please of 64 it said and there is none that calleth upon thy name that stirred up himself to take hold of thee he said there are many that pray but we haven't gotten to the place of prayer where we can stir up ourselves to take hold of god sometimes we just come and pray and speak in tongues and whilst we are speaking in tongues our minds will be wallowing our minds will be somewhere else but the bible said that god is looking for somebody who will stay up his spirit until he holds to god i declare that today laziness will not pay tonight say in the name of jesus say oh lord stir up my spirit oh lord i stir up my spirit in the name of jesus for thou hast hid thy face from us and has consumed us because of our iniquity no tonight you cannot live here barren no 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 because master madam you are going to hold on you will live here poor it will work stand it up hold on to god until you receive a breakthrough until you get a breakthrough for that job you are not living here tonight 
until you get breakthrough for that wedding you are not living here tonight until you get breakthrough for that healing you are not living here tonight until you receive that money right now you hear tech in the supernatural you are not living here tonight is somebody ready are you ready now are you ready say in the name of jesus i am ready tonight i want us to deal with some things i'm coming everyone lift up your hand and say in the name of jesus i receive the anointing because the anointing settles the matter the anointing makes my face to shine the anointing breaks every yoke the anointing lift up the bedding oh lord right now lift up the bedding in the name of jesus amen tonight we are going to pray for your church first before we individualize prayers now Luke chapter 22 verse 31 this is what the devil wants to do we want to pray for the branches we want to pray for him harvest international ministries is that right it's ministries uh -huh. okay we're going to pray for all of you that any plan the devil has in his mind against your branch in other words this church your church members your family and you yourself we will destroy it now here's something he said and the lord said simon simon behold satan had desired to have you that ye may he may sift you as wheat now look at this calm down but i prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen the brethren number two look at acts chapter 12 verse 1. now there was an onslaught against the church and in the spirit this is what i see we have to block we have to block where are the branch pastors respectfully where are you are you here we are going to block every decision of darkness any onslaught church we are going to block church members any onslaught on the body of christ on this church we overcome and overturn and now listen now about that time herod the king stretched forth about that time the same time about that time the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church let's go further and he killed james now i'm speaking prophetically he killed james the brother of john with the sword and because he saw it pleased the jews he proceeded further to take peter also today we are going to block death from our churches are you ready we are going to block divorce from our churches we're going to block accidents and losing of souls from our churches stand to your feet with me right now there is an onslaught of the devil against us then were the days of a living bread come on let's 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 number four go what was a scripture person is he a she or he is that she hello madam four and when he had apprehended him now listen when he had apprehended him after he had arrested him uh, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending listen oh, intending after easter to bring him forth to the people number five ma'am peter therefore was kept in prison but but Oh, I can't hear you, but, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Tonight, we are going to pray for Harvest International Ministries before we change direction. And I want you to be a serious because when you say Harvest International, it's not a building, no, it's you. So in the name of Jesus, say with me, lift up your hands. Say in the name of Jesus, say tonight. We enter the supernatural and the throne of God from where all power proceeds from by reason of prayer. Tonight, I lift up prayers for Harvest International as I clap my hands and I lift up prayer. I am praying for Harvest International that any demonic onslaught, any intention of darkness, any intention of the devil, to fight this house, to fight the general of Asia, his wife, his family, 
his finances to fight the congregation members to bring that today we arrest clap your hands everybody open your mouth can I have some prayer warriors to back me we arrest every decisions of darkness can I hear you we are praying this prayer time open your mouth don't pray in tongues pray in understanding our tongues to it pray in understanding I want to hear you before we grab the microphone Atandari Mashanda Lakataya Kilitaya Nabahataya Litapai Aditan Debeke Lapanda Bahaya Lantia Ale Lapantia Lala Ale Kama Lapamba Bahaya Lapanda Clap your hands and pray. We have some prayers to pray. All kinds of prayers. Ila la la maya daya, atiria le da paya, atiria taya la paya, idi ato apandaria, ikan daba la haya, ikan bana babaria de la haya. Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org. Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.